So Jake Payne, the five alarm drama queen, is at it again. He's coming after the Democrats. He's making fun of Allison Lundergan Grimes. Every fucking thing she does, he's just shitting on. It's almost like he wants her to fucking lose. She's the presumptive Democrat nominee, and Mitch McConnell's going to fucking lose. Bevin's not going to be able to meet Mitch. Allison Lundergan Grimes is the biggest uh, 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 hope for Kentucky that we've seen in a long time. And she was strong. She was poised and strong. Listen to her speech at Fancy Farm. She's ready for this fight. She says, we're not going to be scared of you, Mitch. We know what you've been doing. And she's hitting him on all the right notes. Um, you know, he's been in there for 30 years. And, uh, you know, he's, he's whatever Kentucky, perennial problems Kentucky has, poverty, health care, violence, prisons, police brutality, pollution, mental health, cancer deaths, uh, heart disease, obesity, Smoking, binge drinking, on and on and on. God, God damn, it's fucking Kentucky. We've had perennial problems for the last 30 years. That's a good ass fucking counterclaim to say basically any fucking thing he says. Well, he's been in power for 30 years. What the fuck has he done for this state? 30 goddamn years. But Jake Payne, he was like, now nah, Allison is just trying to use the U.S. Senate. So Mitch McConnell, he does some fucking bullshit, trying to pass like anti coal regulations because that's why the coal industry is going down because. They're, they're, you know, too regulated. Bullshit. If uh, we actually cared about the Kentucky people, if this was actually a commonwealth, we would take the coal. We would take the coal and the land and redistribute it to everybody. We would take the coal for the people. It would be the people's, the people's coal because well, uh, it creates electricity. You know, we can be able to produce cheap electricity for everybody. So you have page one here. It's on... I don't know, um, uh, September 25th, so he posted this shit today, and he says, Allison Lundergan Grimes trying to lose, she's so stupid, she don't know what he's doing, I'm fucking a savvy political expert, I know what's going on, who the fuck you been taking advice from, you wronger than a motherfucker, man, he's, uh, first he makes fun of Allison Lundergan Grimes when she opens up the primary campaign, right, they said, wow, it was so horrible, you know, she was disorganized, this and that, she came out, she said what she needed to say, she was strong, she's plainly spoken, and, you know, I believe her, and I believe she knows what she's doing. I think she's a great candidate, and because she's polling, she's polling above Mitch McConnell right now, better than Mitch, the bitch, the white supremacist, piece of fuck shit, who's been in there for 30 fucking years, 30 fucking years. Um, so, yeah, keep on fucking shitting on all the challengers of Mitch McConnell and tell me that you against Mitch McConnell. <coughs> Fuck Jake Payne. Jake Payne goes after the Democrats and the liberals to prove to his conservative fucking friends that he's fair and balanced. The only fucking way that you'd ever want to be Jake Payne's friend is if you're a conservative because he'll try to fucking prove how shitty he is to the Democrats and liberals in order to get your love. Fuck him. He ain't fucking fair. He ain't got no fucking principles or morality. He's a gatekeeper for the Republican Party. So you have, um, okay, so, you know, fuck Jake Payne and what he said about Allison Lundergan Grimes. Um, the other, uh, oh yeah, the, the issue, <laughs> I didn't even say what the issue was. The issue was, uh, he, she said something about that he has done nothing for Coe. He's anti coe He's been there for 30 years. What the fuck has she done? And then the current journal, you know, rushes to Mitch's defense. It was like, hey, wait, he's, he's done a lot of things. He's passed lots of regulations and stuff, you know. Like, she don't know what she's talking about. Jake Payne reads the current journal. Current journal's making fun of her. So he's like, oh, oh, oh since she don't know what she's talking about, she's stupid. His exact quote is, not only are her elderly advisors too stupid to realize they have no clue how to run a federal race, but they're allowing her to do crap like this. Just bizarro. It's like she wants to be portrayed as too stupid to breathe. Her mother needs to step in right away to shut her dad up. Fuck you, Jake Payne. Jake Payne sees anybody else that gets attention in Kentucky as a threat to his own fucking personal power. Allison Lundergan Grimes come out of nowhere. She's well-spoken. She's pulling higher than Mitch McConnell. She's going to fucking win. She's going to be the next senator of Kentucky. But Jake, <coughs> Jake Payne continues just to shit on her. He's got so much shit in the fucking article. All she did was say that, you know, he's talking about trying to cut regulations and then they asked her for comment and her comment was, well, he's been in there for 30 years. What the fuck has he done? 
He's lost the jobs. Jobs are leaving, you know, cold jobs are being left because Mick McConnell's been in power for 30 fucking years. <coughs> maybe, maybe the problem isn't that Mitch McConnell, um, you know, is cutting regulations and that's great for the coal industry. What Mitch McConnell is doing is not successful for the, for the coal industry. He's been in power for 30 years. Under Bush, what the fuck he do? Under Reagan, what he do? 30 years. Was that Carter? 2013, 2003, so 83. So Ronald Reagan. What was he doing in Ronald Reagan's era? When Ronald Reagan was president, what well, that was the, the Republicans were in power. Then baby uh, Daddy Bush, and then baby Bush. The Republicans have been in power for you know sixteen fucking years during his thirty year tenure. What the fuck has he done in those sixteen years? Did you save the fucking coal industry? Just making a, you know less regulations. So go ahead, coal industry, pollute all the fucking streams, pollute all the air. It doesn't fucking matter. Well, guess what? Have no regulations, let them pollute all over the place, but they're still losing coal jobs. It's going down, the industry is going down, there's alternative energy sources, and there's other things that's going on. It's a very popular industry, and it's very important, and I think we should grab a hold of it. But what Miss uh, Miss Grimes is saying is genius, and she's 100% right. Uh, he's a senator, and he did not, you know, he's trying to make it a free enterprise market, but capitalism has fucking failed. We saw that in 2008. Nothing's been fixed since 2008. Shit's going to happen again. And uh, we're going to be cutting more regulations, right? Because the more regulations you cut, the better it is for King Cole. Shit, Jack Payne used to be anti-King Cole, but evidently he's King Cole stooge now. He can't even see, you know, these clear-ass fucking current generalists of fucking Watterson, Henry Watterson, and... George Prentice, known Ku Klux Klan, fucking white supremacist, racist, just low life pieces of shit, got lots of blood of uh, black people on their hands. You know, so, you know, they're corporate too, so, you know, we expect them to be for King Cole. King Cole didn't give a fuck about us, he was killing us, bloody Harlan, you know, one and two in the 30s and the 70s. Fucking King Cole killing us, our workers and the miners, when they don't have their permits or when they don't have, you know, the proper regulations and the fucking mine collapses on some poor father's head. No regulations. They're dumping all the shit in the stream so that way people are drinking uh, these bad streams and going to the hospital. More sickness. Some of the coal counties are some of the poorest counties in the state. They're sitting on a bed of gold. So now there's no jobs, and there's no fucking money left. Now, Mitch McConnell fucked the whole thing up. Mitch McConnell's powerful. He could have pushed for nationalization of coal. Nationalizing coal would have created cheaper prices of electricity for uh, Kentucky people, and it would have also saved our coal industry, too. It still can. Right now, the coal is, like, really too far deep, and it's not commercially, commercially viable to dig and transport, you know, to dig so far and transport so far. But if the state owns it, everything we get is ours. And we can use it to fund ourselves. So if power goes out of the United States, we got a coal fucking field, you know, that'll be able to keep the power going. <coughs> so there's eight minutes. Fuck Jake Payne, right? Fuck him. Um, recently in Danville, Kentucky, there's uh, three people that were shot in a downtown pawn shop. So uh, Danville, Kentucky, Boyle County. Um, I don't know. It's Central Kentucky. So you have uh, Chief uh, Ch Chief Tony Gray he said at a news conference Monday he saw a van. Man, these motherfuckers don't know what the fuck is going on. It's been about four or five days. This trail is cold. They haven't found any suspects. There's a meeting. Three people are shot and dead. It was at you know there was guns, possibly drugs. Possibly something else, gold, gold's involved, guns, maybe drugs. That's a pawn shop. Pawn shops are notorious for, you know, uh, bad things happening. The ATF, the Waco fame, right, the ones who killed all those children in Waco, Texas, they come in to save the day, you know, they know what's best for children, right? In Waco, they murdered the children. And here in uh, uh, Danville, Kentucky, they put all the schools on lockdown when this guy shot dude and then took off. So, I don't know, that just seems misdirected, mis it's, you know, I guess it's precautionary or whatever, but it seems mis misguided. They're also blocking parents from getting their own child. Parents go in and can I get my child? No, no, we can't do that. 
Instead, we're going to allow all these authority figures with all these guns, you know, to protect the children. Because, you know, they could have been one of them, right? They could have pretended to be an authority figure. That ever happens, right? Isn't that what the Navy bombing was? Wasn't that one of our own people, Fort Hood? Isn't that one of our own military turning against us? I mean, that's the, the frag, right? They used to call that fragging in Vietnam. Whenever in Vietnam, a commander would tell a troops to do some shit, they say, you know, fuck you, and then they would just frag the officer. And then they had to do what he said, right? Then they, they was free, and then they could just all band together and say he was killed by enemy fire. So, three people, Michael Hawkinsmith, Angela Hawkinsmith, and uh, Daniel P. Smith of Richmond, they were the ones that was killed in the pawn shop, and, uh, you know, the ATF came in there and put everything on lockdown. Uh, it's been four or five days. They haven't caught the person. And this is, this is a problem. This is a problem. The cops don't fucking do shit. You call the police. If you get robbed, they ain't going to do a goddamn thing. Cops only, hell, they could come <laughs> if you got robbed. You know, I had my radio stolen out of my car. And I was like, should I call the cops? So yeah, like there's the crime statistics and shit. So, you know, for the numbers, you know, you want to, like, report it. But what the fuck would they do? They would come in and inspect shit. And, you know, my tags, I haven't, I gotta get some new tags, and so they would say, hey, well, what's this, what's this about? I know you're a victim of crime, but what is this? <laughs> and they would charge me and give me a ticket. So they wouldn't catch the guy who just, you know, took my shit, which is bullshit. Some motherfucker just run around breaking into people's cars, taking shit. They ain't gonna do nothing about that, but they will fuck me up, okay? And why? Because I called them up to my house. Nah, nah, I would never call the police. Here's a fucking murder case. They can't catch the guy. They don't know where he's at. Four or five days. He could be out in fucking Canada by now. And um, there was also, uh, recently in Bardstown, there was, I thought it was like a sniper shooter. Um, the Bardstown police is like, you know, it's a different. It's like Shively police. It's like part of Louisville, but it's like their own thing. They got their own police department. So you got Bardstown police department, Shively police department. And then the LMPD, which I assume the LMPD can go everywhere, including Shively and Bardstown. I don't know. Um, but the, the, the Bardstown police officer, he got shot with a shotgun, 12-gauge shotgun. I thought it was a sniper, but 12-gauge shotgun meant he had to be pretty, you know, more close than, like, you know, on some mountaintop. Um, uh, so you have, you know, you have this, right? And it also makes me think of, like, Andy Griffith. He, he was able to do things without a gun at all. Um, but they haven't caught that guy. The guy who um, had an ambush, a premeditated ambush against Jason Ellis in Bardstown. Um, <coughs> he's gotten away. So he's, he's gone free. And... So has these people in, in Danville, you know, probably one guy um, who was part of this meeting or knew about this meeting and just killed everybody there. So, I mean, if the cops are useful, they should be catching murderers at least. If they can't catch murderers, they ain't going to be catching robbers, they ain't going to be catching anybody else. They said you don't have to quarter the troops. That was in the Constitution, right? Um, I don't know. They shut the fucking Danville down. When the Boston Marathon bomber was shut down, they was going through people's houses, telling people to stay inside their houses. Um, you know, there's Waco where they actually shoot the fucking children. So, you know, there is a balance between a danger and you need to catch the danger. But I'm just wondering where that balance is and do we trust the people in power to, to do these things properly, right? How do you, you know, if you give someone the power... If you give a good, a good man the power to do something wrong in order to get and save the child, I would agree with that. But if you give all people that same power, the bad man can use the power in order to, you know, do harm um, to, you know, others or the child or whoever. So they, you know, the power is just a tool. I don't know, some sort of accountability system, some sort of citizens complaint authority board. That's what they do in Cincinnati. Um, another weird ass thing, I guess, in uh, Kentucky, I got 40 seconds to say this, Operation Bob Chop in 1992, where you had a bunch of legislators that was sold out Kentucky for about like $100, 
they was just a hundred dollars and they was voting for the horse racing industry and uh, the FBI was able to tap into their phones and they figured out what was going on. FBI has been tapping phones forever. We're getting mad about NSA and Obama, but we've been tapping phones forever. This is a, a significant because the FBI had also tapped um, uh, 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 that Illinois governor, uh, um, not Gabag, but uh, Blagovich. Blagovich. The, the, they also tapped Richie Farmer. Richie Farmer is going to be going to fucking prison for several fucking years, and he used to be the agricultural commissioner. He ran for governor, you know, just two years ago. FBI is everywhere.